we're going to create a function called get choice. And the get choice is going to return an integer. Okay. And this is going to be a function that we're going to get to reuse. And actually, we're going to work on it right now and make it a little bit nicer. So here we go. Notice there's no variable here called choice, so we got to declare it in here. Just because it's declared in main doesn't mean we have it to use here. Okay, you got that? Oops. It's declared here in main, but that's just in main. Once you're out of main, you don't know what it's called or what it is or anything. So you have to redeclare it up here. You tell them you want their choice, you let them type it in, then you return it. Okay? So all you have to do here, instead of using this stuff, you just have to say choice equals get choice. Okay, and that's a lot simpler. And now we can reuse this exact same thing down here. What we call reusable code. I'm going to run this, make sure it works. Okay, perfect. Now, one of the things we, one of the problems we had with this is that the users can they can type in 99 if they want. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to modify this get choice method so that it's going to enforce a minimum and a maximum. Min, max. Okay, you already know about do while, so we're going to do while, let's see, choice is less than min or choice is greater than max, okay? And that will make sure that they always type in something that you're looking for. Now we have to go down here and put two arguments in. I'm going to say minimum is one, maximum is three, and that's because I gave uh, three choices here. If you have four choices, it'll be one to four or whatever. All of mine have three choices, okay? So this is Minimum, always going to be one for our game. <clears throat> However many choices you have, you put there. Okay? Let's go try this. Compile it. Run it. Perfect. Okay. Now, the last thing we want to do is show the results. So, we're going to have a show results. Show results one. Now, the thing is, the results needs to know what it's what you pick. So we're going to pass in choice. Okay. We're going to give it choice. Now we're going to cut out of this. Cut all this stuff out. Paste it up into show results one. Come back down here and call show results one. Remember we got to give it choice here. All right, now let's go ahead and create a method up here called show results two. Notice we're still above main. All right, go back down here. Let's cut out all these choices. Paste them into show results two method function and come back down here and we got to call it. We got to say show results to choice. Now let's take a look at our main program. I have my font sent big so people can see it easier. But here's our here's our main program right here. That is a heck of a lot easier and shorter and more readable and understandable than it used to be. So that's our main program. All it's doing is calling those functions that we created. And up here we've got our functions. We've got two that encapsulate the show introduction, show situation one, and then show situation two. See how that code neatly fits in those functions? Okay, now we show our choices. Show choices one here. Show choices two here. See how nice and neat that is? And you can easily identify what it's doing. Now, I admit that this get choice function is a little complicated, but Let's sort of talk about it. The first thing is we're going to get a choice, so we're going to return an integer. This means that we're going to have to return some sort of integer. This is the name of the function. 
Now this is going to say, this is going to contain the minimum value you're going to let them type in. That's going to contain the maximum value you're going to let them type in. Here's a local variable we declared. Now you know this. That's stuff we've already done. Printf, ask them for their choice, let them type it in. And here we just check to make sure they're within the bounds of the choices we want. Finally, we created two, two functions to show the results. And we passed in the choice to each one of them. And then here we are to main. That's it. Let me go ahead and compile it and run it. It'd be Oh, I've got two errors. All right, let's figure out where my errors are. Let's see. First error. Show results one. Okay. Um, this actually, if you're within a method, it should be exit, not return. And if you're going to use exit, you actually have to include std lib. Now let's try to go ahead and compile that guy. Perfect. So what I did was I, since it was, it was in a method, I, I changed the return zero to exit zero, and then I had to include std lib. Let's run this guy. Looks the exact same as it did before. The only difference is it's it's well organized. Now you have some more work than I just had because you have to go ahead and do 10 situations and results and all that kind of stuff. And if you do this right, then you're set up for the very next exercise, which we'll get in a couple of days, which is going to be to put the functions in separate source code modules. That's all for now. Have fun.